In geometry, reasoning is used all the time to do proofs and to, to kind of prove outcomes. And there's two types of reasoning that, that are common. It's inductive and deductive. And there's kind of this big discussion or debate as to which type of reasoning is being used in which scenario. And I remember when I learned inductive versus deductive reasoning, it was like the most confusing thing in the entire world. And still, when you look for resources and, and lessons, it's still unclear. So this is it. We're going to settle this here and now. We're going to break this down. It's going to be the clearest explanation you've ever heard. Okay. And so the difference between inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning, they're both reasoning. They both have value. But for inductive reasoning, it's basically the pattern is an observation to a rule. You observe something in your everyday life and then you sort of make an assumption because of what you've observed, right? The opposite is true of deductive. In deductive reasoning, you have a rule that's kind of known to be true, known to be factual. And because of that rule, then you make assumptions. I wrote the word observation, but it, then you basically make an observation or an assumption. So in one case, you observe stuff, jump to conclusions. In the other, you rely on a concrete rule or fact that is accepted to be true, and then you make the observation. And so one kind of shortcut to just to, to explain the difference really is this, is to assume that, and, and again, I can hear mathematicians all over the world, you know, like screaming right now at this video, but because this is a generalization, but in general, inductive reasoning can often be sort of weak. You're making assumptions about something you've observed, whereas deductive reasoning can typically be strong or concrete. And in geometry, when you're doing proofs, you're usually doing deductive reasoning. And you'll kind of understand this weak versus strong concept as I give examples. Yes, there is false deductive logic, deductive reasoning, where you use deductive reasoning, but your premise is wrong, and so the whole thing falls apart. And yes, some inductive reasoning can really make sense. It can be good reasoning, but typically it's it's less foundational, so it's a little more weak. So I think the best way to do this is to look at, let's look at like four examples. And I won't tell you what they are right away. I'll tell you the examples. You jump ahead of me and just kind of guess, is this inductive, is this deductive, and we'll see if you're right. Okay, so here's a good example. Let's say you're at a barbecue with your friends. You're just chilling. You know, you got some... Um, you got some beats on the boom box playing a little football and you go over to the cooler and you're you're at the cooler right and you pull out you see you see in there that there's 10 sodas and you decide to check so you pull out eight in a row so you pull eight sodas and all of them are seven up right eight in a row boom and there's two sodas left and you totally assume like obviously if the first eight sodas are seven ups and there's two left obviously the last two are definitely probably seven up now that is reasoning. That's that's logic. That makes sense. That's reasoning. But what type of reasoning is that, right? Inductive or deductive? This is totally a case of inductive reasoning. You made the observation that the first eight were seven up, and then you jumped to the conclusion that the last two probably are. And frankly, you're probably right. But again, this is sort of considered, this is weak reasoning if you ask me, because there's no rule that says in America or anywhere, when there's a cooler and you have 10 sodas, all of them are seven up. There's no rule. You just made the observation, right? And then you kind of jump to the conclusion that the last two were going to be seven up. So this is an example of inductive reasoning. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, let's say you know that anyone that is 18 years old, 18 years old can vote, right? And then your friend, your friend Paulina, um, you know that Paulina is 18 years old. So we'll say Paulina is 18. So then you assume, you, you come to the conclusion that Paulina can vote, right? If you're 18, you can vote. Paulina's 18. Therefore, we assume that Paulina can vote. And that's, again, that's reasoning. What type of reasoning is this? Is this inductive or deductive? Because this first one is essentially a concrete known fact, we know that in America, if you're 18, you can vote. So Paulina's 18, she can vote. This is deductive reasoning. We went from a rule to an observation. And this is also a good example of why deductive reasoning, although it appears to be bulletproof, you know, it could be wrong. Because again, we forgot the little disclaimer. Maybe Paulina has a felony right? Maybe Paulina is a criminal and now uh, she cannot vote. So this is, could all be based on faulty logic. However, it is deductive reasoning because we went from a rule, 18 year olds can vote to an observation. So that was deductive reasoning. Okay, let's try another one. You ready? Hang, hang on tight for the next one. 
Oh yeah, let's say I'm, I'm on the baseball team and you know, I love baseball. And I notice that every time I go to bed at 9 p.m. So let's say I go to bed at 9, right? Then I always have a great game. I always play really well. I get a couple of hits or whatever. I play good on defense and you know, my coach is happy and I'm happy. And so that seems to be true. Now tonight I go to bed at 9. So then tomorrow I will definitely have a good game. Right. So I go to when I go to bed at nine this year, pretty much every time when I go to bed at nine, I have a great game. Right. So now tonight I'm going to go to bed at nine. So tomorrow I'm probably going to have a, get a couple hits. I'll definitely have a great game. What kind of reasoning? Again, this is reasoning. But which type of reasoning is it? This is inductive. This is an observation. There's no, you know, law of physics or, or weird even law on the, uh, the legal books that if I go to bed at nine, I have to have a good game. That's just something I've noticed. That's an observation I've made. And therefore, I've sort of come up with my own rule about it that, that it's true. It doesn't have to be. It's kind of weak reasoning. But nonetheless, this is inductive reasoning. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so let's say I'm at baseball practice and I'm holding the ball and I know that I heard of this weird thing called gravity. My physics teacher, you know, yeah, he's pretty nerdy, a little weird maybe, but he explained gravity, right? And then I know that when things go up, they have to come down. And now I have this baseball in my hand and I'm going to throw the baseball up. And then I assume that, yes, the baseball is going to come down. So there's my reasoning, right? I know gravity exists, that when things are thrown up, they return to Earth. And I have a baseball and I'm going to throw it up and I'm going to assume that it returns to earth. Okay, this is a classic example and this does explain why it's so hard to learn this topic. Gravity is a rule, okay? This is a rule that we learn from elementary school all the way till PhD physicists. That when you throw things up because of the, the gravitational pull that it'll return back to earth. So yeah, this is deductive reasoning. We know that the rule is gravity. If I throw it up, it'll come down. There's my rule. My baseball will come down. But this is what's funny about this topic, and this is why it's so hard to learn. Gravity was proven over time since the caveman days by inductive reasoning. They just threw 19 billion baseballs in the air, and 19 billion times it came back down to Earth. And then they came up with what's agreed upon as a rule of gravity. So they are ambiguous. I mean, if you think of a baby, a baby throws his little binky. I don't know what a binky is. Okay, so a baby throws a little Nerf ball in the air 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. Babies don't read. They don't go to college, so they've never heard of gravity. But a baby will, through inductive reasoning, learn that when you throw a ball up, it does come back down. So again, something as concrete as gravity is still ambiguous. Sorry to ruin your day. But this is, so I think we've made a lot of progress in understanding the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. It's pretty obvious when you're making observations from your daily life, like the example of going to bed at nine and having a good game, versus a rule, like if you're 18, you can vote, Paulina's 18, therefore she can vote. And so that's the difference, the key difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. You're welcome. I'm telling you, it took me years to figure this out. And so hopefully this uh, lesson just breaks it down crystal clear.